We are on set with Nathaniel Morrison. And Nathaniel, I have to tell you, thank you so much for taking the time in between cuts. Yeah, not a problem. <laughs> so the, the movie that we're on the set of is Walk a Mile in My Prada. Yes. Can you tell me a little bit about the movie? Um, I don't know. I guess you sort of describe it as uh, Freaky Friday meets uh, in and out um, I start off as an extremely stereotypical, homophobic, macho dude. And uh, through sort of di divine intervention, um, I uh, have my sexual orientation reversed with a gay co-worker. And, uh, you know, I sort of uh, take a walk in his <laughs> products. Uh, not to be carny, but um, uh, I do sort of uh, get to understand what he goes through. There's a... Uh, a wish, there's an argument that we're having in the middle of the argument, he wishes that I was straight, I mean that I was gay and I wish that he was straight. And a magic Christmas ornament uh, grants the wish. It takes us a little while to figure out what's going on and uh, I won't give up the rest of the story. Wow, well now that's a huge twist on what we traditionally see, which is younger versus older. Yeah. Boy, uh, did it teach you some different things about the other side. <laughs> well, you know, I, I did a lot of research for this project and I, um, I uh, work for a security company uh, when I'm not acting, managing accounts in different nightclubs, and so I walk around to different clubs, collect the money, and sort of uh, make sure that my guys are being taken care of, that there are no problems, uh, you know, sort of filing incident reports and things of that nature. And so um, we manage uh, two accounts that are um, that are gay clubs. And so... Oh, well then you understand perfectly. When I got this job, I said, you know, I really want to do this justice and I'm not trying to do a caricature here you know I really sort of want to you know, do justice to the to the gay community you know I mean I, I grew up uh, really in a very gay friendly home and uh, my best friend's dad uh, who had adopted him was gay and so I really thought it important to be careful uh, and to be yeah. correct in uh, wow. the portrayal of this role uh, so I s sort of scheduled myself uh, rather than, I talked to my bosses, and I said, you know, look, rather than going from club to club uh, for the next couple months, I would like to sort of, you know, schedule myself um, at Rocket and Club 57. And, I don't know if they need me yet, but... I know we're... Um, <laughs> um, so Rocket and Club 57, which are both two of the hottest uh, gay clubs uh, in New York City. Um, so I did about two months of research, and it was great because you could sort of fly on the wall, and you really got to see all the uh, subcultures within the gay culture um, and you know sort of pick and choose it's like learning a language um, I'm hmm. my wife is from Brazil and I speak fluent uh, Brazilian Portuguese but uh, mainly with a carioca or, or a Rio accent but there are certain pieces of the dialect that I like from other places and as I didn't grow up there and stop my native tongue I was able to pick and choose I did the same thing with Italian um, so this was sort of the same thing. It was sort of an amalgamation of different subcultures uh, within the gay community. Oh, now that's interesting. Now, do you have any advice to give people that are dealing with people that are very straight, that might, that aren't used to dealing with gays? I mean, here in LA, we're used to it. You know what it is? I mean, at the end of the day- They're all people. We're all human beings. Yeah. And it's nobody's business what you do with people that you love and love is a funny thing you know mm -hmm. you can't uh, you can't control it you can't control what happens with it and and to begrudge somebody their happiness their peace of mind their ability to um, build a life yeah. uh, and understand that they have the same protections and, and rights as every other human being to deny someone that right it's I mean it's just it's it's inhumane as far as I'm concerned Actually, that's a really good way of point it, putting it. Yeah. <laughs> now, you used to be on One Life to Live yes. for many about, years. About seven years, yeah. That, that's a long time. Uh, indeed, yeah. Yeah, so yeah I was a little worried because, you know, all the good actors get <laughs> fired really quickly. <laughs> I'm starting to doubt myself. I said, geez, I've been here a long time. I must be terrible. <laughs> Do you miss old soap opera days? No. Yeah. Um, I miss a really great steady paycheck. You know, who wouldn't? But, um, That's acting. <laughs> you, you start to sort of lose a little bit of who you are as an artist mm. uh, when you go in each day and you're doing 40 pages. I mean, today we're going to shoot four, five pages and really get to concentrate on the moments of bringing out uh, levels in the performance. Whereas 
soap opera, it's like getting shot out of a cannon every single day. We shoot 120 pages in 12 oh to 13 my. hours. We're shooting 120 pages here in three weeks. Um, so it's, it's a brutal pace. It really is great training. Um, it's it's uh, a great way to learn how to take something and turning or nothing rather and turn it into something. Wow. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing that. And I'm curious now, one of the actresses that you worked with in your earlier years yes. was Angelina Jolie, which is in Indeed. the news all over the place. Yeah, she is huge. Um, it was an interesting first experience. I, I was um, not from an acting family. Uh, nobody in my, my, my mom pursued a career as a child and, and was successful uh, in a very mild sort of way. I mean, we did a lot of theater, a lot of community theater, a lot of things like that. So um, it was interesting to, to be thrown in with someone who had grown up mm. in this business. Um, she was very helpful. She's helpful in a lot of ways. She gave me a lot of tips and I learned a lot of things from her that I've sort of carried through my career. Did you have any idea that she would be so huge as she is now? Her dad is John Boyd. I know. It's like, so, um, it's a yeah, good start. There was never a doubt in my mind. I used to say to her, I'd say, well, you know, I mean, this acting thing doesn't work out. I can always do construction. But you, I mean, you know, your dad's a midnight cowboy. What you, <laughs> you don't have a choice, honey. What was probably one of the best tips that she gave you? Um, I'd have to say that it was during the audition process. Um, I... Uh, had made sure during the last couple of auditions where we were making sure we were screen testing together that I was completely off book. And um, right before we went back into the room, we were running lines in the hallway and she said, listen, don't put your pages down. And I said, well, why? She said, well, it, it, not for nothing. It, these people will think that that's it, that that's all you have to give, that, that you're, and obviously as actors and artists, we know that that's not true. Right. But... Producers, investors, people of that nature, they, they, they don't want to think that you've, you've reached the end of the line. Well, I'm getting called on the set, so uh, it's been nice chatting. We'll see you later. Thank you, Nathaniel. All right. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you.